I love that. You ever wanted your space to feel like a warm hug full of nostalgia? Like your grandma's living room, but make it aesthetic. Then you're in the right place. This is the wood accent wall of your dreams. Why am I so dressed up, you might ask. What can I say? I love a theme. First, measure the overall height and width of your wall, then break that up into increments of four by eight feet. If your ceilings are higher than eight feet, you'll also measure for the bottom panels. My wall was 11 by 12 feet, so I needed five utility plywood panels. My husband is here helping me, and I definitely recommend getting help. It's really useful to have one person holding the board in place and the other person drilling in the trim head screws. Now, I have seen some DIY catastrophes where people drill a hole and all of a sudden the place is flooded, so definitely take precaution here and make sure you don't flood your whole place. <laughs> Lining it up is key, but I have a hack for that if it doesn't work out perfectly. I'd love these wavy veining movement in the wood and I obviously wanted to finesse it <laughs> to get the shapes and the positioning that I wanted. Wood grain is the word I was looking for. Wood grain. It does tend to bubble up in the middle, so you want to push it down as you go so that it's nice and flush. I have this randomly placed coat closet in my living room, so I measured the length of the cutout that I was going to need. Then I marked where the cutout was going to be placed directly on the board. I double and triple checked my measurements, and then I traced the cutout that I was planning to remove. I started out with the handsaw, but we quickly saw that the score and snap method with the box cutter was the easiest non-power tool method. Next, you'll measure and cut for your bottom panels if necessary. Ciao. Let me know in the comments if y'all are team handsaw because <laughs> every time I've used one, it's just been nonsense. Zero out of ten. I really don't want just like a basic square trim. And then I was like, well, what else could I do? And I kind of have this recurring theme of these kind of like round shapes with like the way the sofa is, this kind of like crazy wavy pattern in my rug and shower curtain that I'm obsessed with. So I was like, what if I made like kind of like a drip trim came through dripping drip drip just to kind of fill in this white spot here okay i'm feeling excited again i was feeling like just just tired just like oh this is enough but now i'm excited so hopefully i can create this shape that i want um successfully <laughs> Once again, I'm using my very professional eyeball it as I go method to see how I want to sketch these curves and where I want it to dip down to really cover the pieces I messed up. Like I said before, the box cutter gave me the most flexibility, especially around these curves. I had to go over it a few times to really get it all the way through, but it gave me the agility I needed to get this drip trim just right. Then all you have to do is go over it with some 80 grit sandpaper, and I definitely recommend wearing gloves because I have given myself some mean splinters with this stuff. I forgot to film this, but then you just stick it up there with removable double-sided tape so you can get the screws out later. And this is how you make sure you have it placed exactly how you want it. I'm so happy! <laughs> I literally was sitting here for like 15 minutes like looking at the options I had at first. Sometimes you just gotta let loose. Sometimes you gotta go away from the plan. And just create whatever's in your head. That's all I got. And this is coming from a perfectionist. Growth. You know what that is? Growth.